hello everyone uh, hi hello so thanks for joining this call uh, we are going to start the session now so this is our uh, second session uh, this session focuses more on again html5 so we will not jump into the css but we will speak more on html5 and some of the uh, additional information which you people may need uh, in building a website uh, we will uh, speak about that we will see how we can use it uh, in building the websites and all so uh, as uh, usual i'll share my screen uh, to share the content please let me know if you people are not able to see the screen uh, if you are having any questions in between of the sessions please raise your hand and uh, let me know for any questions you may have okay so let's start with our second session um, so the agenda for uh, today's session would be to understand more on HTML5 we have already covered some of the HTML5 uh, concepts like header, footer, navigation. We'll again go into that. We'll see some more examples uh, to understand it. And then uh, we will cover some of more it, uh, elements like figure, list, uh, those kind of elements. And uh, later on, we will understand the link relationships, which are uh, widely used in HTML5 and all the websites, right? So we are going to uh, speak about that. So let's move on to the slide. So first thing is the HTML header. So yesterday we spoke about header uh, to give the semantic description, semantic behavior to the HTML website. So header tells that this is the header of the content, right? In HTML, you can have multiple headers. Ideally, what happens is when you build your website, you have only one header, which is uh, your navigation map or navigation bar. Okay, but generally, uh, in typical website, what is uh, uh, what is a header is a top fixed bar, which has the logo on the left side, and which has the menu on the right side. Right, so that's a typical header you people are having in your website nowadays. Nobody uh, follows that somebody have the logo on top in the center and menu below to that again in the center some people are having logos on the left side and no menus on the right side rather than they are having search text box on the right side and some user settings on the right side so very customizable header nowadays people build and if you are going we are going to speak about bootstrap in the last session right so when you use bootstrap you do not need to actually worry about all this because it provides you CSS classes which you need to include into the header. So now coming back to our slide which tells about headers. So as I said, this header is a basically tells the start of some section. So entire HTML starting with the body at till the end of the body is the section limit. Okay. So even if you don't define your body start, your HTML body start and your HTML body end is a section. Okay. That section contains multiple things, including header, including other sections as well. Okay. Now, as I said, there are multiple heading elements which you can use in header to signify what this header for. Okay. So you can have h1 till x h6 uh, heading which you can use inside the header so at this point of time if you see the example uh, in header we are having a logo right uh, but you can have multiple things inside the header uh, including headings so uh, we we will see the example of header footer and uh, sections as well now, same like header, uh, footer is used to mark the end of the section. Okay, footer is always marked to end of the section. So, as I say, your start of the body and end of the body is a section. Now, inside that, you can create your own section. Okay, uh, through section element. 
inside that section you can have again more sections so that section may have headings inside that you may have another sections and like that and so on and so forth now every section may have footers as well so it's a nested kind of stuff you can create inside the html is there any business significance is there any logical significance of structuring your html in this way fundamentally no okay even if you structure your uh, html everything inside body it works very well but then when it goes to as i said right html5 focuses more on the semantic sides of website so if you build your website and your website is not semantic uh, in terms of readability and maintainability as you go on build and scale your application it becomes very difficult to manage everything so developer doesn't understand what part of the code signifies what thing right so you can create nested structures headers footers sections uh, articles so inside section you can have articles and navbar as i said is a basically a uh, menu kind of stuff so options of menu goes inside nav tag nav element okay now what goes inside the footer so you must be knowing right most of the time um, inside the footer goes information like about us contact us then copyright uh, copyright stuff then probably some some kind of uh, even some people are including qr codes as well to scan it and give uh, which gives you more information about uh, the website right so this is all you can uh, put in, in inside a footer okay so again there is no restriction you can put a, you can put entire form data entry form into footer nobody is going to stop it but it's illogical okay so inside footer you most probably would be having this about us contact us and uh, copyright uh, stuff okay going to the next slide we are having navigation so navigation is basically consisting of menu items so we are going to see various menu items how to create so yesterday i spoke about unordered list right today we are going to speak more about unordered list which is ul right then ordered list which is ol and then uh, descriptive list which is dl so we are going to speak about three list today how to create it and what are the various options options available within the within that list uh, but this list goes inside the nav nav element why because nav represents menu now can your menu uh, exist without nav tag again the answer is yes because we there are no such rules and regulations while you write your html okay but as i said to make it more semantic you put all your menu items inside the nav tag so that a developer understands that whatever goes inside this is it, that needs to be represented at a, as a menu item onto the screen okay now uh, most of the time you put your menu items inside the nav but sometimes you feel that some of the list items should not go inside the nav so what should go inside uh, the nav items and what should not go inside the nav items so by definition uh, nav should include all the major menus okay so your your application would be having a uh, lots of major menus right uh, some settings somewhere uh, probably if you are having e-commerce websites then various sections on uh, 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 on the items like electronics and fashion and all those stuff so those should go into the menus but into your pages you may have some another options as well right uh, probably list of items uh, on clicking of that you get redirected to some other page so those menu items should not go inside nav tag by definition okay again there is no rules and regulation so major menu items of the website should go inside the nav mostly your left hand side menu or if you are having any right hand side menu or all the top menu 
right or top menu items with your header should go inside nav others should go uh, anywhere else or you do not need to include it into the nav because nav represents major menu items not uh -huh. the minor menu items uh, moving to the next uh, slide uh, nesting structure so uh, basically this uh, this is uh, what we are going to see in the example right so you see here i am having a header this is my main header i am using heading and some paragraph then the nav because this is my major menu item okay so i have a header then i have a section now this is the nested section so in fact in whatever goes inside the body can be considered as the section okay whatever goes inside the body html body can be considered as the section now i have nested section of which i am having one header then i am having one section inside the section again i am having heading heading and another section right second section third section and one more aside tag now what is aside aside as name suggests is a side thing which is not related to the content which is getting displayed okay it means you may be writing something on some content probably on traveling or uh, some wildlife right but when you want to display something which is not related to your content you can put it inside a site so while going through your website while going while developer reads your web page right he understands that whatever the content which is inside the site doesn't relate to the actual content website is representing okay so most probably what goes is advertising so if you want to display google ads uh, into your website create a site tag give css so that it will be displayed on the right most side of your website or probably bottom most of your website or it's up to you where you want to display the ads right but you should always use aside why again for this semantic purpose so this is a nested structure section inside section inside section and you can create as many nesting sections as you want and every section can have header body and footer so basically it's like every section may have header article and the footer so okay. what is the difference between section and div element uh in if we speak in html5 terms and html4 html 4s div tag is similar to html5 section okay sir okay understood yeah uh frankly telling nobody is writing html nowadays i have seen lots of uh, application and lots of website people are not following this particular semantic methodology because people are used to write divs and inside divs they are they used to write containers and inside that they go they pull all the content so it's it's even uh, html5 is here since last almost 4 years probably more than that but people are still not used to this section and article and header and footer and all the reason behind is people are using ui frameworks like C, uh, bootstrap foundation onsen those are all ui frameworks people uses that and that framework actually suffice to give your website a very nice look and feel without doing much of an effort and that's the reason people create simply div tags and put that classes inside it and that's it your if you put class header it will become header if you put class menu it will be menu and then you do not need to worry about whether you are using section header or navigation or whatever else right but this is the right way uh if you follow or don't follow actually doesn't make much of a difference uh, from the developer point if you are going to maintain your website definitely it's not needed but as an organization if you build and you are going to hand over to your team you should always make your website readable otherwise it will create problem in enhancing and scaling that website right so okay sir yeah so uh, there is no difference as such now this is the nested uh, kind of uh, structure we are having in html um 
if I show you something about navigation, so you see here inside header, I am again having navigation. We are we are going to speak about uh, um, UL and uh, other list as well. Okay. Now inside uh, inside your uh, section, you may have article, as I said. Now again, inside the article, you may have again sections. Okay. So nested. Nested sections can be uh, created inside your HTML. Okay. Now we are going to speak about list list items. So uh, let's go back to the slide and let's see what is the. So we have seen the nesting structure, right? Section inside the section, uh, section inside the articles. Uh, okay. Now one more thing is uh, what is the outline? You see this leads to the following outline. So what is this? Now when you create your HTML page in uh, uh, HTML5 in a semantic way like section, then heading, then another section, then article, then subsection, right? Using another nested sections you can create the outline what is outline outline is basically indexes so if you if you remember if we create the word document uh, the second or third page is indexes and that indexes is main section subsection sub subsection of another subsection like that right one one dot one one dot one dot one and then it goes deep down to the hierarchy you can create such kind of indexes for your HTML page just to understand whether you have structured your HTML correctly or not. That is called outline. Okay. When it is used just to know whether you have structured your HTML website in a right way or not. So there are various websites you can search for. Uh, and there are Chrome extension as well. Uh, HTML5 Outliner. See, this is the Chrome extension. So what you need to do is you need to uh, copy paste your HTML here or copy paste the URL of which you want to create the outline or you can simply uh, append or attach any file which you want to create the outline. So uh, if you see here, I have a HTML, I have one heading, and then inside that, again, I have, I'm having another section. Inside that, I am having another, uh, at another heading. So if I create outline this, it creates like this. right it creates like this what it means is basically tells whether your uh, HTML is structured in a right way or not so you can check your outline and you can tell whether my structure of the HTML is right or not what is the structure structure is basically your section subsection article all those goes in a proper hierarchy or not uh, ideally okay. that uh, and this is a subsection that line should have had an index of 1.1 1 .1, isn't it because it's nested under section number one that's true that's true but we haven't uh, this is just a sample right so we haven't actually created it in a way that it will show one and one dot one right so this is uh, the this is the, website, this is the website which you can use Inside that you can put your HTML and then you can check whether your outline is correct or not. If you had, uh, if you had, uh, no, if you wanted to, uh, if you really wanted 1.1 1 .1 to enter, how should you have written the code? So probably you can have a section here again. Inside that you can put another section. So probably I can have a uh, section here. I haven't tried this. 
but uh, let's uh, see whether it works or not. So inside the section, I am having this uh, H1 tag. Inside that, again, I am having another section where I am having another H1 tag, and then I have a section, right? So it's a basically a nested section. Uh, it has created some weird outline. So I we haven't structured it correctly. And that's the reason uh, the indexes are not coming right way. Probably we can uh, try to put our uh, nested website here, right? So what I can do is I can copy enter HTML. I can test it here. Again, it depends on website also, okay? Whether it so it whether it shows one dot one dot one or it just shows the hierarchy. So I haven't tried this outline uh, for my website or my stuff. Um, uh, some error in the HTML outline processing, uh, but you can try. Okay, you try it. Probably take it as an exercise. You try it and see whether uh, this shows 1.1 or not. Uh, this is the online website. I would suggest you to use the Chrome extension. Uh, this is the Chrome extension, Outliner. Okay, you can install this uh, uh, Outliner and then when you open your website, when you include your HTML page, it will show you the section. Uh, so here also, I'm I'm seeing that they are not using 1.1.10. Dot dot Probably this the standard way of uh, outlining the HTML. They may not be using 1.1. Dot dot they will only show the hierarchy of the sections. Oh, with the indentation, isn't it? Okay, maybe it is. with the indentation. So probably that's how an outliner works. So you can use this Chrome extension. That's uh, very good uh, for outlining. But when you actually need it. Uh, I haven't seen any practical use case of having the outline, right? Because once we build the website, our uh, uh, actual motive is to get it get it displayed properly onto the screen. Now we are not worried about whether the outline is correct or not, because it yes. doesn't make any difference logically. It will not right. hamper any functionality of your website. So we are not worried. But this is the concept a web developer should know, and that's okay. why we are sharing it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, going back to our website, so here we are seeing 1.1, 1.2. Dot one, dot probably uh, that's not the right way. It's, it only shows the hierarchy of your uh, nesting structure. So going to the next slide is aside. So I think we are we have already uh, spoken about aside. So here also uh, uh, you see I am having one aside section. Now when I open it into the so this is my section inside the section I have a side, a side in inside that I am having a um, advertising block paragraph. But when I open this uh, in the browser, right? Mm. Why so? Uh, see, it doesn't make any difference here. So by just giving aside, it doesn't get displayed on the right hand side here. You still need to do CSS work. So this is the default behavior of nesting. Even you have nested sections, it just get displayed in a plain text, uh, starting from top to bottom without any hierarchy. Because we still don't have any CSS. CSS is very important for website to give it styles. So these tabs, these tags, HTML tags are only for readability purpose. It doesn't give any kind of functionality to your website. Okay. Now going back to the slide. So this is the outliner I already spoken with you. You have Chrome extension. Uh, I have given you one of the website as well. This is the website I think probably we have uh, used. Uh, Firefox also you can get the add-ons to check the outliners. Now the figure uh, tag or probably figure element in HTML5. What is the difference of figure element and the image element? So ultimately image element goes inside the figure. Does it make any difference? No. It simply doesn't make 
any difference only thing is it basically uh, call it all the content which is of image so you can have multiple images and you can call it it in a single figure and then you can play around with the css so that that particular image becomes a single figure on the screen you can still do this achieve this without figure tag but again to increase the readability you pull all necessary images like you have a circle inside circle you want to square inside square you want to show line what you do is you collect all these three figures uh, three images into figure tag and that becomes a single figure to a website developer if you remove the figure tag itself and if you keep these three images and all the css as it is does it make any difference no it doesn't make any difference at all but still there is this tag called figure if you want to use it you can use it if you don't want to use it it's up to you what is the benefit only one a semantic approach to your website building right one more advantage of figure is you have a figure caption tag in a figure uh, element now if you want to achieve this without figure what happens is you need to play around with lots of css where you will pull this caption below to the figure right so you need to write css for that that if you put this into the figure tag the caption exactly comes below your image so you do not need to do that extra effort to put that caption below to the image okay so you, it's it's a bit tricky if you want to create a caption without figure you need to write css so that that particular text appears exactly below to that figure right so i I'll, I'll show you the example of uh, figure uh, caps, captioning as well so you see this is my figure and inside that i have a image tag and i have a figure caption as well the name of the tag is fig caption okay now i have this image inside my images folder so i have given the relative path dot dot slash which comes to this this level this hierarchy level and inside that i have images and then the bold dot jpg right now um you see here i have given the caption right so when i open it into uh, the browser you see that caption exactly appearing below to the image this is the caption so if you want to do it without uh without figure uh there is a problem so if i remove this if i remove this and if i remove this but again to center align the caption i think you have to resort to css again oh uh, correct yeah so let's say a heading right so i want to probably not h1 probably h5 and i want to give this a, a kind of caption it's appearing see where it is appearing right so currently it's only one image but imagine you are having multiple images properly uh, aligned with each other then your caption may be floating here and there so at this point of time your even your caption is little bit lower than where exactly it should be because i have removed this caption tag so you may have a problem aligning your cap caption when you are not using figure okay but if you are using figure tag your caption will be absolutely below to your exact image which you may have aligned using css and you can use fig caption uh, sorry not this one it will be fig caption the smaller one so you can use this this html5 case sensitive yes of course other html are not isn't it previous html are not case sensitive 
Uh, no. Uh, so case sensitive means you mean to say whether uh, the interpretation will work or not, then interpretation will work. But mm -hmm. in terms of writing it, um, I would say it is case sensitive in a manner where if I see if I write like this, uh, I guess it will work. But this is how we write HTML. No, right. In that way, it is case sensitive. Oh, sorry. No, some of the examples you see on Mozilla, right? They are using caption uh, caps, even for hyperlinks, even for uh, yeah, other stuff. They are using caps as their uh, uh, as their uh, examples. So you can you can use it, but uh, it is case sensitive in a manner from the semantic purpose. So most of the uh, recommendation uh, tells you to use the small cases when you build your semantic websites but browsers from the browser point of view interpretation still still happens okay thank you so this is the benefit of having a figure uh, but without CSS also, you may not be able to call it various images. So you, you will end up writing CSS when you want to call it multiple images, right? And um, so that that's how a figure is useful when you are having multiple images and you want to caption it. That's where the figure is useful. OK. Uh, some of the questions now. So how we set the navigation links? Using the nav element. That's true, but how you set the links? Links. Uh, use giving a anchor tag in the nav element? Uh, using, no. Using list. Yeah. Order list, yeah, sorry, yeah, list. So either you used order list or you use unordered list. So we haven't seen the list yet. We are going to see it, but you create your links using UL or OL or uh, DL, which we are going to see now. How section limits are defined? With the section uh, tag. Yeah, that's true. So even if you don't create the section tags, your starting of the body tag and ending of the body tag creates one section. Okay. So end of the section, uh, the ending section tag is the limit of your one section. Yes. And what is the figure element? I think we have already, that's the last part we discussed. So let's, let's skip that question. Uh, let's move on to the list. Okay. So how many types of list? There are two, three. Previously, there were two, uh, two types. Now there are three types. We have unordered list, which is UL. There is ordered list, which is OL, and there is a description list, which is DL. Okay, which is widely used. UL is the widely used list in various HTMLs or various websites. What is the difference between UL and OL? Let's not cover DL at this point. Let's first focus on UL and OL. What is UL? What is OL? UL is unordered list, and there the list item appears as bullet points, and uh, OL the list items appear as a serial number. That's true. So uh, if we go to some of the um, list example, right? So this is a simple unordered list. You have UL, which is unordered list. Unordered list always have a list items, multiple list items, which is LI. Okay. So this is a simple unordered list. Now, this particular uh, unordered list is bulleted. So when I open, um, if I create a sample HTML, sample list .html, and uh, let me set this right, sample list. Uh, so how did you make the full HTML code appear by just typing HTML? Uh, how, how is that possible in Sublime Viewer? 
Okay, so you need to uh, uh, put Control Shift E. In okay. that, you need to write uh, set syntax. You need to select this set syntax HTML. Okay, Control Shift and, P. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, once you select that, you write HTML and do Control Space. Oh, okay. So let's have a simple list consisting of list item. First item. Second. So this is bulleted now. This is unordered release. Now you can select the style of this bullet as well. In unordered list, this is the default uh, uh, bullet, but you can actually uh, give a style to this default uh, bullet as well. Now what is the attribute for that? The attribute for that is list style type. Okay, so that comes my next part you have list style type you can give multiple values uh, you can give a single value from the multiple values and based on that you can have um, various types of bullets so if i change this if i add it into this i will add list style type so this is css okay this is if you don't understand this we are going to cover it into the css but this is how you apply styling into the element uh, and normal styling using style attribute and then give give the value of actual style so style name is list style type and i am putting a circle so what is the difference now is happening is the bulleted item is now changed okay can you uh, give user defined images as the bullet like list can. style type column and then some you know image which some GIF which you download. You, you, you can, it. you can give it, but then you need to play around with the CSS. And if you want okay. to include the image, what you need to do is you need to write image tag here. So it oh. will appear on adjacent then, image tag. But then won't the default uh, bullet point also come because the li is li tag is there, no? No, but you will apply the CSS, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because you okay. have, you will apply the CSS, you will remove the default behavior of your UL UL tag. Okay, fine. Uh, can we give this image in a label tag instead, along with the list? You can. In fact, you can put any possible values inside this. You can put label. Label actually doesn't make any sense here. Right Not here means before li uh, list means. A label list means attaching the label to the list. Yeah. Here you want label? Yeah. Means is it possible? No, it's not possible. Okay. Label inside li is possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when we will cover Bootstrap, right? You people will feel that why we have learned all this. <laughs> because bootstrap has all the css classes you can just edit into your uh, element and it will appear very nice onto the screen so you do not need to worry about all this but i think as a web developer you should always know every uh, bit and stuff uh, so i'm not demotivating you people but uh, just uh, you know just understand this uh, understand because we are going to cover a lot on CSS as well, like even the animations. This is not required if we are going to use Bootstrap. So, but it's always good because it, sometimes what happens is the problem. I'll tell you, most of the people uses UI frameworks. So Bootstrap Foundation are the widely used UI frameworks. So what happens is your website looks similar to other people. So there is no unique selling proposition to your website. So what people do, they use Bootstrap but then they do lots of customization into the bootstrap. So to do that customization, you at least should know 
the basics about this whatever we are doing and the basics about the css which we are going to learn and the javascript also for that matter okay but ultimately you will end up using one of the ui framework not the default behavior for sure okay. so what is the uh, possible values you can have in list style type so here i have mentioned disk disk is the default which is coming as that normal bullet circle square you can have other values also i have i have kept a note of you can have armenian i have put the description as well okay uh, from where i have kept uh, i have found this i have found it from um, w3 uh, website okay w3 org so there are various uh, value to it you can have hebrew then what not katakana wa i don't understand this but you can still have um, this if you want to support other language you can have you can change your css like this i think hiragana and katakana are japanese uh, uh, fonts japanese okay so but will it be uh, uh, will it be uh, i will uh, just rework okay so if i put here because my browser needs to support that font right so i will simply try it so it doesn't work because i haven't included that font yet so probably i need to include the font and then only that uh, style will work is hebrew and all uh, hebrew is a israeli language so uh, that will not work as it is uh, where is the list that is you have to install the font using control panel isn't it yeah yeah you, no 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 you do not need to install the font onto your machine you need to include the font onto your website so you need to download the font files and then you need to include it into your website oh i didn't get you how what is that download the font files and input need, oh, oh okay 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 oh. include it in your web page huh? yeah this? yeah so there are various uh, i think these are all uh, probably uh, i think this is uh, this is this will work upper alpha upper latin upper upper roman this all will work um, but uh, other fonts will not work so this is unordered list now comes the order lists order list very simple you can have uh, one two three associated with it so uh, now i can open this uh, into the browser so you see this is the order list 1 2 3 <laughs> here is what our code is ol so only difference is from ul we are going to ol which is order list rest of the thing remain same now again uh, here it was list style type here we are having attribute which is called type okay so i have used this roman small characters so it is 1 2 3 <laughs> what are the possible values of type 1 which is default capital a small a capital i small i so just like here you can give a style to your unordered list using various fonts or some um, uh, stuff in ordered list you have a type attribute so you do not need to give a style you just use type attribute and default uh, allowed values are one which is the default one caps a small a caps i small i okay so this is ordered list and we also checked on ordered list now going to the description list this is something new and this is uh, useful in case you want to give some information about the menu item so uh, generally people achieve it using uh, uh, giving some text below to the menu items or the tool tip so if you don't understand the tool tip tool tip is whenever you hover your mouse onto that particular element some small pop up opens and it gives you the description and some information about that item okay very small pop up probably a width of 2020 and uh, 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 it it gives you the information about that item same way uh, there is a list which has been introduced 
which is called description list which is dl and inside the dl you don't have li okay so inside the description list you don't use list item rather than you use this uh, you use this term and then this uh, item description so probably use a description term and description definition okay so dt is dl is description list dt means description term term means what is actually the menu item and dd means description definition definition means a small help or small text signifying what is the use of that okay so we are having this list as well what is the difference so you won't get any bullet you won't get any uh, uh, marker in this list so if we sorry if we go to the explorer we have description list can you see so this indentation comes as default okay this indentation comes as default but there is no bullet there is no number with description list now where this is useful where is description list useful now the same thing you can uh, sorry it's useful in a definition of terms isn't it definition of correct correct but the same thing you can achieve with ul and i'll tell you when you will build your website or when you will work in any application uh, or any project you are not going to use even the ol or this dl the reason is because ul suffices almost all things uh, using some bit of css here and there so people don't use description list description list definitely you will not find ol sometimes you will find and most of the time you will find ul tag so most of the website you try to open they would they would be using uls so in menu items generally we don't give numbering right it doesn't look good uh, doesn't look uh, good onto the screen so we use uh, an order list um, description list again uh, defining terms and its uh, definition Uh, probably it's useful in case of giving conditions or terms of your websites otherwise it's not useful but still you can achieve it using list items using some bit of css here and there okay so just for information there is another list description list as well you can create it using dl tag instead of li you would be having two things inside the dl one is the dt which is actual term and another is the definition of that term so you may have a uh, terms and conditions using dl that probably a business use case you may use description list okay so now we have done with our list as well uh, going to the emphasizing text now this is little bit boring stuff and this is very easily understandable so we'll simply uh, see one of the example uh okay so i'll open it simply into the browser and we will see it what is the use case it's very simple uh, there is no difference most mostly now the problem here is the i let me open it into the chrome now so uh this is the small tab okay so small is with small tag inside now where it is useful so what first what is the use case of uh, what is the behavior of small so small actually uh, uh it actually decreases the font size okay of the text so if you want to give some bit of uh explanation about something or disclosure so in the example we are having disclosure right or if you want to give some example small examples about the statement which you are making 
you can use this small tag you can use this small tag for that okay what is the use so this is very normal use case of a small tag in our html generally it is used while writing a big content like blogs when you write blogs you write lots of content in that you may use small otherwise uh, general web applications you don't use small tags right because we generally don't uh, require it but if you want to give some examples like uh, for example or eg such kind of stuffs you can give inside small then there is a mark tag so this is you know it is marked in yellow uh, if we go to i the behavior still remains same so uh, mark is basically to mark now you can apply the css and you can change the color okay default is a yellow so it will be marked this is how you use mark then uh, the sub tag sorry uh, we'll go to the sub tag represents digit or text like this this is the sub tag so we have two inside sub tag and that's the reason you are seeing this two like this okay same way we are having sup super tag so it's it, it's like it becomes like this so it's simple right there is nothing fancy here so sub tag super tag and then you are having a strong which is basically making it bold so you can use bold as well b tag and the strong is also the same it, it represents the uh, same behavior okay making the um, text uh, highlighted in bold so small then we are having mark then we are having sub sublative text superlative text and then we are having a bold strong tag so that's what emphasizing text means so there are various tags i have given the example of some of them you can try others okay but it's it's very simple and it's used when you build lots of content text content this is how you emphasize your text into that content okay okay now again the address element now address element again is a semantic tag into html file um, you can still achieve whatever uh, whatever stuff you want to give you can still provide without address but address element actually represents so if, when you want to uh, give some contact information or a contact form or the url of the contact form you can put it in inside the address tag that's it generally address tag goes inside the footer but it's not always um, true because sometimes what happens is uh, you have some forms where you need to provide some contact information there also you may use address address tag okay uh, if you ask me i am not using this much tags to be frank most of the things i am doing with div and span <laughs> okay so i am not using this many tags even to apply semantics but the reason is because i am i am maintaining my own website right so uh, that's the reason if you are uh, into organization then you may have to be asked, you you may uh, be asked to write your html page in a semantic way and then in that case this is useful so put an address into the footer tag to give the contacts form or some other uh, information which you may want to provide even a paragraph you, you can have it inside the address but it is used to tell where to contact for any kind of support or for any kind of help where to contact right uh, we have learned lots and lots of elements small mark okay 
date and time we haven't checked in fact i i i think i don't have any example of it anyway i have it into this slide uh so basically date time uh, attribute is used to represent the time into your web page now this can be achieved with javascript when we are into javascript i'll explain you how you can actually retrieve the current uh, date and time from the system system means wherever your users is opening your website but there is another way of uh, retrieving the actual current time into your browser uh, that is through time element okay now there are various formats you can represents the time uh i don't remember because there are lots and lots of format of time i don't remember any everything but whatever given in the presentation uh same way you can have multiple uh ways of representation of time so you may have a date plus time you may have only time you may have only a kind of uh, uh month and date you can have only month and year you can have only minutes you can have only hours with the date like 24 hour stream right you can still do that with the time tag um and that's how you achieve displaying the time on to your website sir please tell once more how to display the current time because in all these tags the date and time is already given in string form how to display the current time please explain that once more current time as i said uh, we i i will going i am going to uh, so basically what happens is you can display a time into a time tag okay but the retrieval of the time can be happen through javascript which i said i will tell you when we are into javascript so in javascript there are methods to retrieve the current time these are all static time uh, to uh, give you the kind of example in fact uh, if i remember correctly uh, html5 has the functionality to retrieve the current time i i'll, I'll try to figure it out if there is something uh, and i'll let you know but just in, remember that currently what how how uh, generally people do is they retrieve the current time using javascript okay so there are methods uh, i think system dot um, some some i think current time current time milliseconds whatever i i don't remember the method in javascript there is one method you can simply retrieve the time and then you can put inside the time tag using uh, dynamic uh, html generation so we will see it using javascript how you can create the html dynamically but uh, that's how you put your uh, time into time tag now without javascript can you retrieve it i am not sure i need to check it i will check it and i'll let you know by the next session okay okay sir now do we really need time tag uh, no because uh, there is no fundamental uh, um, difference so even if i if, if i copy it uh, let's uh, if i have a simple list right let's put me a time tag inside time let me have this uh, i'll go to sample list this is my sample list no yeah here it is so i can put it inside p tag as well doesn't make it doesn't make any difference it doesn't make any difference okay what is the use of uh, this um, i need to check it let's put it inside the html and let's see what happens so i have a time i have a class which is dt start and then i have a uh, date time um what if i simply close this tag nothing is coming let me comment it out 
see i am not using this tag so i am not well very well familiar with this and unfortunately this content has been added recently so i haven't researched a lot on this content as well so yeah i don't have enough information about this time tag but anyway html are very easy to even understand and research right so i am giving this 2005 uh what is this no what's the use of this no i don't understand this anyway so what is the use of this particular statement right i i will try to figure it out and then i'll try to also figure it out if there is any way we can retrieve the current time from the html itself okay without using javascript so the two things i i would try to um see on and i will cover it in the next session so let's park the question for now and let's move on to the link now uh this is something uh, interesting in html5 so link tag right so there are three things first there are uh, concentrated on two things one is a which is hyperlink and then there is a link tag so two two things are there now where you actually put the link tags link tags generally goes in the head so this is relation so you define the relation of the resource so what is link first thing is what is link link tells about an another resource first thing and then the relation attribute tells the relation of the current document with that another resource which you are mentioning so i am saying relation style sheet it means this document is having this style sheet it means you can have this style in this document so you you mention the link of the css file here now inside the relation you can have multiple options and you need to read on every options possible frankly telling what options you are going to use you are going to use style sheet you may use alternate alternate and then style sheet what is the use of this now let's say one user wants to have all the theme into blue color one user wants to have a theme into red color one user wants to have it without any color you can provide it you can have that kind of uh, feature into your website using alternate style sheet so what happens is you have three style sheet file dot css file so let's say red dot css and then uh, probably uh, you have another uh, link tag where you mention blue dot css okay and then through javascript see basically when you include this alternate what happens is at least in mozilla i know uh, you can go to view and i think from view option you can select this css file okay chrome i don't know uh, i think there is no option but in mozilla there are options when you have alternate style sheet inside the mozilla's view tools uh, inside the tools uh, you have view option right inside view you i think you can select uh, the, this style sheet so whatever the name you are giving here red.css blue.css will appear there and you can select that and that style sheet that style sheet will be used as your uh, styling stuff but generally uh, you don't want to do that way right so the best way is you do it through javascript and how you do it through javascript you trigger between the css uh, using the events so we will see when user clicks red it's red theme you can user clicks blue it's a blue theme you can achieve it using event handling uh but you can apply alternate i haven't seen the practical examples yet 
but I have given you one that if you want to give a customization to your users uh, to use your web application, you can create multiple theme based CSS and then you can trigger based on events. So this is one of the relation I have explained. There are there can be multiple relations on link tag. Okay, most probably used inside head always, whereas hyperlink can be anywhere inside body tag. Hyperlink means head tag, right? Sorry. Okay. So hyperlink is basically an a tag. Now here also, uh, most of the time we do HREA. That's it. But this hyperlink also can have a relation tag. Is it necessary? No. What is the use of this? Just to mention what is the relation of this resource to the current document. Does it make any difference uh, while working? For hyperlink, no. For link, yes. Okay, any wrong value here may create wrong behavior. Any wrong value here will not create any wrong behavior. You are just mentioning what is the relation of that resource with uh, the current document. Okay, so that's why you use, uh, and that's why you will find no REL attribute in hyperlinks, whereas you will always find REL attributes in link tag. What is the most common? 99% of the time you will see style sheet and another is uh, I have created the example actually this one shortcut icon Now what is this used for shortcut and the icon so you can have multiple here, right? We have already seen alternate style sheet so you can have multiple relations uh, mentioned here so one is the style sheet which is widely used another is shortcut and icon now what is the use of this so you see this this one right you see this one this this is the icon which most of the website displays when it opens up right so i could get this is the icon which they are displaying here into the tab this is the zoom icon which is getting displayed here. If you want to create a website and if you open that, open your website, none of the icon will be displayed here and default icon, which is this one. For Chrome, this is the default icon. It will be displayed here. So you want to achieve the same stuff. How you can do that? You can create a favicon image so see this has to be the same name okay and the same extension there are online stuffs available which converts your png jpg into ico icon image the name of that should be favicon okay because browser understands this browsers are written in that way it understands favicon and it puts that here so you need to have the file name as favicon give the path of it and the relation of this resource to this document is shortcut icon. So if I open it, uh, into the browser, where is that? So you see, this is the icon I have used. Uh, this is the icon. Does the actual okay? Does the actual dot ico file have to be of any specified size, width, and height, or it can be anything in browser? No, it it, no, no, no. It has to be of specific width and height. It has to be of specific uh, terms and uh, uh, specification. So, as I said, you need to have your uh, JPG file, and then go to Google, search for convert jpg into I icon, icon and then you will find a lot of list of websites you just upload your image and they will convert it into icon form. okay thank you now what are the various relations 
okay one more thing is area so there is one more uh, example i have created so you see here right we are speaking about we have we have spoken about a and link tag but we haven't spoken about area so what is this area tag in html so i have created one sample so basically what happens is you have a image let me show you one let's say this is the image now you want to segregate this image in such a way that when user clicks here you want to display some other image when user clicks here you want to display some another image so let's say you are having a galaxy image inside the galaxy image you have sun earth and moon so when somebody clicks on the area where moon is there you want to display entire moon image when somebody clicks on the sun area you want to display entire sun image then you can use this area tag so basically area is used while working with images okay and this is the sample so i have this image this is not the uh, i don't have the ideal image with me but what could have been a better example is i have a image where i show you entire galaxy and then based on specific clicking on some planets you see that image in a bigger uh, bigger uh, sizes okay now how it works so you show your main image first and then you use this attribute called use map okay so use image tag use the default uh, image whichever the image you want to display and then you use use map that use map is what the map tag or map element which you will create so this is the map element now map element will create that particular stuff okay so uh, what you do is you create area into this image and when somebody clicks that area you display the image now which image that you mention here now what part of the area so you create like this okay so rectangle coordinates uh, the left top to the bottom right pixel so you you provide coordinates in circle also i think you don't need uh, four uh, coordinates i have provided four i think that is wrong in circle you don't need you don't need uh, uh, four uh, coordinates i think you need uh, two, maybe three for the maybe. center and uh, two for the center and one for the radius correct correct yeah two for the center one yeah three three correct so circle you require three i have created this uh, wrong way but anyway so you understood that's the correct uh, that's that's good coordinates is basically based on the shape what kind of area you want to create so this area gets created into this image and then when you click that area it goes to uh, this but this particular image which you mention as a part of hyperlink so if i open it into the browser now uh we are a little bit slow okay so this is the image right now i have created two area in this image one is rectangle another is circle probably uh, what happens is when i click an area which falls under this coordinates when i click inside that area this image will get displayed so if i click here okay this is the image which got displayed if i click this area this image is getting displayed okay so that's how you work with area practical use case as i said you have a bigger image and then you want to display a uh, larger part of it so what happens is uh, if you give uh, some online examination right um, uh, some mandatory examinations which organizations prepare what happens is they they give you bigger image and then they say click on the left rectangle click on the right rectangle and when you click on the left rectangle it gives more information about that image then if you click on the right part of that image it gives more information about that particular section in such cases 
you may create this kind of stuff into your website so if you want to divide your entire big image into sections into sections then you can use area and then for separate separate areas you can use separate image how Now do you identify those coordinates from your image sorry uh, you have to identify the exact coordinates uh, that define the uh, you know different sections in your image you have to use a uh, picture editing tool no also what do you recommend uh, you know uh, probably you don't need picture editing tool what you can do is you can uh, first do a hit and trial of where let's say your image is getting displayed here so and if you want to do a rectangle here you can place a pixel with the color red uh, by using css property so um we when we will learn about css we will see where to actually directly put something here uh, in the browser so okay the other thing i wanted to ask is these coordinates are they relative to the coordinates of the image or are they related to the html page like no, they, are, they are related It is no. 126. They are related to the image. They are related to the image, correct? Okay. Okay. So I have given the width and height as well. So based on that, you can do hit and trial, and then you can figure out what is the actual pixel. Okay. So that's area. Now the relation, right? So I was speaking about relation. So there are various relations, and there are various effect on link tag and a and area tag. most of the time it remains same okay but there are various other uh, uh, changes as well okay so what are the uh, relations there are alternate we have seen then style sheet we have seen right uh, previous and next is basically for series of the document so when you use previous you just tell the relation of the document is this document is a series and the next resource which we are going to open is the next document previous means previous stuff uh, author and bookmark again uh, easily understandable uh, by the name itself um, license i don't have much idea about the license uh, no follow no follow is basically used for search engines okay so what happens is when you move from one link to another link uh, that another link also gets indexed into search engine so when you click on hyperlink it moves to the next slide or a next page and then uh, that particular page also gets indexed by search engine when you use no follow as the relation search engine will not index it okay so no follow is basically used in that case now i would request you to read other uh, relations there are a little bit more as well no that's it so these are all relations these are all hyperlinks so you can go to w3org and you can read about uh, more about the relations as i said most of the time you will use style sheet and you will use a uh, shortcut icon so icon tag along with the shortcut so shortcut is not mentioned here but that's one relation uh and inside hyperlink and area you will not actually use relations because it doesn't make much of a difference major difference is with link tag a and area relations are very irrelevant it's generally generally used for semantic purpose but in the link tag it is used for uh just to make sense not only just to make sense but it actually Uh, makes difference into the behavior as well right just like we have seen shortcut icon gives that icon on top of the tab so um, open the ppt and read uh, other uh, re uh, relations as well which we haven't covered if you find any issue in that we we can discuss that okay uh, so already we are running out of time i am not going to cover this kind of questions uh, but just i'll only give the answers uh, of these questions okay just for uh, so what are the different type of list three types unordered ordered and the description list what are the different tags for emphasizing text probably my answer would be a lot right so i am small mark uh, italic bold uh, uh, strong 
right sub superlative sub uh, sublative text which is sub and sup uh, tags so there are various uh, emphasizing uh, tags available in html what is link and how it is created so we have seen that example how the link is created between documents right and that's it from the questions okay so we are done uh, from this session i try to cover almost all the uh, possible topics with examples but if you feel if you want to uh, need if you need any more help in any of the topics please let me know and uh, try to complete your exercise about this two sessions uh, and try to submit it okay if you find any problem in exercise you can mail me and we can discuss over email so the exercise covers only the assignments or does it also include the quiz quizzes are for uh, just for interact interaction so exercise okay. always uh, covers assignments only and some more stuff which i am asking you to read right like the relations i asked you to read uh, the time tag which we are going to cover right uh, so you can also read more on to that so uh, during the beginning of the session you had mentioned about hamburger button can you just elaborate what it is um so you see three line button and some of the website right i don't know whether we have in the acad build or not generally uh, responsive websites are having that uh, button um yeah this one yeah 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 okay so when you click you see this menu so it it is like this this menu gets converted into that button as soon as the screen size is reduces so this oh. is bootstrap this is bootstrap feature we can even create this kind of button okay but we will see when we will speak about bootstrap okay in mobile application you will find this button a lot okay 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 thank you so um uh, i am open for question uh, though we are running out of time i am still open for the questions if you people are having any if not at this point we can discuss in the next uh, sessions as well and uh, uh, you can do exercises during this week so thanks a lot guys uh, keep mailing me if you are having any problem have a nice rest of the day bye bye